Robotic farming is here. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to talk about an article from the ABC which is discussing robots and artificial intelligence to guide Australia's first fully automated farm. So, robotic farming is finally here. Are all the fears of the AI takeover starting to emerge? Well, not really if we're using them to farm for us. I mean, that's it. But before we go through that, let's talk about a couple of things. The first is labor issues. We've spoken several times on this channel and all through the news about issues getting people to work on the farms, to getting you know fruit pickers. And sometimes the conditions that are offered there are pretty terrible. You can see, you know, expecting to pay a significant amount in rent for a little hovel in the middle of nowhere, unable to live on your own place. And other times it's just people who are whinging because they're not working hard enough to earn a decent wage when pick rate is counted into it. That's kind of the way it is. I've had friends who've done it and have made decent money on it. Yeah, it's hard work. It's not not a high skilled job. You don't need a high level of education to do it, guys. You know, that that's life. I mean you look at some of the articles. Queensland Strawberry Industry offers a hundred thousand cash prize in a bid to entice Harvard wo uh, harvest workers. Victorian government offers cash bonuses for job seekers to pick fruit and vegetables in regional areas. Would be fruit picker calls for more flexible hiring practices as growers seek answers to worker shortages. So you can see why they want to mechanize and automate this industry, perhaps. So let's look at this article here about robotic farming. Hang on, wait, what's going on here? I'm in the wrong one. Oh, we'll jump over here and have a look at it. Robotic farming is here. So if we have a look at, at this, you know, robots and artificial intelligence to guide Australia's first fully automated farm. Robots and artificial intelligence will replace workers on Australia's first fully automated farm created at a cost of $20 million. Charles Stewart University in Wagga Wagga will create the hands-free farm on a 1,900 hectare property to demonstrate what robots and artificial intelligence can do without workers in the paddock. I mean, when they say AI, it's, an, it's algorithmic problem solving. It's not uh, self-aware. And I'm not surprised dr drones are going to be used on these things more and more. They're so cheap. Food Agility Chief Executive Richard Norton said the reality of hands-free farming was closer than many people realized. Full automation is not a distant concept. We already have mines in the Pilbara operating entirely through automation, he said. Yeah, it's happening. I mean, there you go. Look, there you go. They're the drones. It's not, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that a farmer could be sitting in a study or in front of a computer driving multiple vehicles. The farm will use robotic tractors, harvesters, survey equipment, and drones. Artificial intelligence that will handle sowing, dressing, and harvesting new sensors to measure plants, soil, and animals, and carbon management tools to minimize the carbon footprint. The farm is already operating commercially and grows a range of broadacre crops, including wheat, canola, and barley, as well as a vineyard, cattle, and sheep. Mr. Norton said they would focus initially on autonomous vehicles that could harvest a crop while the farmer slept. We might also see mechanically, mechanical and autonomous harvesting in horticultural crops and in grape-growing areas, Mr. Norton said. So, there you go, guys. There you have it. The potential for fully autonomous farms, and we can see here with the drones, and it's only beginning. Now, the, the example, I want to talk about another example of where, you know, where this, head, where this is heading and what the solution is. Now, if you see here, this is from FBR. This is a, well, the Hadrian X, a brick laying robot. You know, you can see the image here. This is from their website. It's a brick laying robot that lays, you know, block work and can put houses up. You don't need brickies anymore and it can do it. And people were excited about this thing, seeing fantastic automation in the construction industry. Now, people bought into it. Here's the question. Would you have invested in an IPO if you had heard about this? You're thinking, fantastic. Yeah, put the money in. Well, it didn't do too well, guys. 
it didn't do too well. It's now, last time I, I screenshotted this the other day, it's sitting at four cents. You can see it's kind of gone down from over 13, $13. There you go, guys. In 2001 to four cents. Am I reading that right? Yeah, four cents. So she ain't doing too well. The reason with this project, my understanding is you need a lot of area to get the vehicle out there and it's still pretty cheap and fast to get a bunch of crew, a crew there to deploy the block work. There's certain sites you couldn't reach it with a robot. It's kind of different to what we're seeing here with the farms because they're having trouble getting workers and these are much smaller vehicles that can assist the farmers in managing the crop. But I just thought it was an interesting example that I'd want to draw everyone's attention to. So here we go. I mean, are we going to be seeing a reduction in jobs, a reduction in opportunities? Perhaps. Or is it a way of the future? Making up for the fact that so many of these labor issues are resulting in shortages of workers, of crops being wasted, of food being thrown away. And what about all the people that would normally have done that work? Are we going to have to start? Are there going to be calls? Will we start to see calls for taxes on robots to replace people? Or is this what happens when you just disincentivize employing people? When you make it so hard to get rid of people? When it's such a burden or when you have such a level of entitlement from some people that you either offshore workers or you completely automate? And if you're thinking, you know, they'll take your jobs. Time to study engineering, guys, and get the technical skills so you can compete with this. Or you can support this, or you can maintain this. There's going to be jobs created from this stuff. They'll need people to maintain these vehicles. They'll need people who have the skills to repair them and build them. The hope is that we have that in Australia, and that it isn't all offshored. That's the big, that's the real worry. I mean, like my, my scanner, my scanner, the tripod broke. I lent it to a, a uh, engineering firm, and the, a bit of it snapped off. To get the piece. For this carbon fiber tripod, I have to bring it in from Italy. It's taking months. Nothing's done here. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. Are you worried that the robots are going to take our jobs? Or you know, do you see it as an opportunity? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye for now. <laughs>